practicing. We've talked to beginners, we've talked to advancing players, so what's left? Let's take a step back and think about it holistically. The first thing I find in practicing that you need to do is make sure that you have a target in sight. I know when I was playing during the lockdown period, my motivation for practicing came to zero because we couldn't see an end in sight. We couldn't see a point. We couldn't see that we were going to get back together and I was going to be playing gigs and I would have to go out and practice at the standard and play at the standard that I'd been playing before. So and as long as you stayed down, it was harder and harder and harder to practice and to do anything useful. Have something, have a goal. If you're going to play a piece of music, have a goal to perform it. Have a goal to do something with it. Sometimes pieces of music, the only thing we do with them is use them as a learning technique. But I'm sure trumpet players of the world are familiar with good old Arbens. Arben Stude has been around for years. This one's actually falling apart. It's been used so much. It's full of exercises and things that I can do to improve myself without going for a performance. Part of a deal we're going to talk about is how we do that. Have a goal. Work for the goal. Now, learning a piece for a goal goes through four stages. The first stage is rough it out. So you've got this piece of music and you think, ah, oh, hey, I might, I like this piece. What's it sound like? Play it through. And you might play it. And make a few thousand mistakes. But you just go through it and go, well, yeah, okay, I can hear how that works. That's good, right? Or I heard someone else play it. I'd like to do it. That's fine. That's your first level. Just get the foundation. Rough it out. Secondly is pull it apart. So I would rarely play, just get this piece and play it right through. I don't care. At this stage, I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to take one part and I'm going to learn one section and I'm going to drill down into it and do it properly. Now, in this particular case, on that variation, I might find that there's things there I don't know. So this is where I'm going to go into other pages of Arbent and look for similar techniques, look for similar pieces, look for things that will help me. I will also slow this right down. So here's a nasty little section. <laughs> If you remember the video before where I showed you how to build up onto that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I would work on that and I would get that right and I would have it. Again, I'm practicing what I can't do, not what I can. So it's improving my technique and it's improving my overall approach. It's really important. Third level of performance and preparation is put it all together. I've practiced that bit, I've practiced this bit, I've done all the little bits there, I've got them right, I've put all the techniques, put it in. Now's the time you play it all the way through. Now's the time when I start to put tempos in. Um, and then the final thing, and this is where a lot of performers slip up. When I've adjudicated, when I've worked and listened and all the rest, I find there's beautiful raw material. There's passion, there's emotion, there's performances, and it's beautiful, but it lacks something. It lacks soul, it lacks the polish that we need, and that's what we need to do, is polish it. Polishing it means attending to all the details, the trills. Okay, this particular piece this is full of trills. Am I going to play them note down, am I going to play them note up, am I going to play them as a baroque trill or as a romantic trill or whatever. There's dynamics and dynamics are the biggest thing that people forget. Particularly young players, it drives me nuts, they play everything at one volume and you go, there's life in here. Dynamics is the thing that creates the image, creates the picture and yet we ignore it. I mean, there's sections in here, and there's, by the way, there's no reason why you have to stick just to those dynamics. They're there for a reason, but you can put 
that extra dynamic scene. I was in a workshop a couple of years ago with Frank Tichelli, a concert band composer. Brilliant. And the passion working with him was just enormous. It was incredible. But he was asked the question, when you compose, when you put it on paper, how much of what's in your head goes on paper? And everyone was expecting him to say, oh, 100% because I'm brilliant. And he turned around and he went, no, he said about half, about 50% makes it onto paper. In other words, if you play everything on this page absolutely by the book, you're only half done. That's when polishing comes into it. Polishing is the other 50%. It's about making it into something. You've got it, it's written dolce here, peacefully, quietly. Yet, it also says forte. Now, I would not play that as a forte. I would back off. And, I mean, I could play it like this. Now, that's not Dolce. That's Colonel Dolce. Dolce is more... the key here is put that polish on and that's the critical thing so the four sections we have rough it out have a look at it decide you're going to do it second section is get it into shape by focusing on just the little bits just the tiny bits here take it apart you know see how it works see what happened particularly things like air and variation variations are always must have some reference to the theme so the theme is critical if you know that theme you can then seek it out in the variation and how do you keep it put it all back together and make it work and finally polish 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 polishing can also include putting in all those extra bits as I've said it can also be learn the piano part now you might not be a piano player or an accompanist so you don't physically have the ability to play that tune but I tell you what I would know before I took this piece on the road I would know exactly what the piano is doing every time so that I don't have to sit there and count bars I know what they're doing and I can guide what they're doing I would also know pretty much the keys the chords the structures that are in this piece so that if I'm playing it and it goes a little wrong I know exactly how to fix it then I would say I'm ready to perform it and finally when you get on stage and you perform it you walk away and everyone just loves your performance and raves about you as a player because you've done the work don't be slack put the effort in it's great see you in the pit